Hey everybody, today I want to show you guys how I like to make chainmail. So I've got this guy that I'm working on, it's some Warhammer Fantasy artwork, and you can see he's got these cool little chainmail sections under his armor. And I just want to show you how I do that. Now I do it in Maya, there is a way to do it in ZBrush, and if you're already aware of that you might wonder why I do it in Maya. It is quicker and easier in ZBrush, so if it works then that's where I do it, but a lot of times the shapes are too complex and it doesn't work. So the way this is done in ZBrush is with something called a nano mesh brush or insert nano mesh. Basically the way these work is you just uh, click and drag and it will repeat this piece of geometry on every single face like that. And you might be wondering why do I do it anywhere else if it's just a one click thing. Uh, and that's because in ZBrush this sort of complex shape here, um, it, can't, it can't really handle that. There is a way to fill it up so that it does fill those gaps when it spreads apart, but then it stretches, which doesn't look right for, for uh, chain mail. So if it's a very simple shape, then I will do it here in ZBrush, but if it's more complex, even as complex as this, I like to do it in Maya. So let me show you how I do that. All right, so I'm back here on my warrior dude, and you can see I've done most of the chain mail. He has one last little section here in the armpits. I think I can actually pull these out so you can see. Uh, so you can see this little section right here for the armpit is just like a space filler for when he lifts up his arm. That's gotta be chain mail. So I'm going to export that to Maya. Here it is. Okay. We can actually do this on just one side of the model too. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete one of these. We'll just work on one side. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that this is UV mapped. So I'm going to go ahead and project it. And then I'll just cut it on the underside. Lay it out nice and flat. Make sure it's inside the 0 to 1 space. And that's good enough. Okay, and I'm actually going to import it back into ZBrush. You'll see why in a second. Okay, I'm going to clear my canvas and just work on a fresh new tool here. Draw it out on the canvas, and there it is. Okay, so the only reason I go back into ZBrush really quick is because ZBrush has a way of just laying out the UVs flat, and then we can export the model in that flattened state. So I'm going to go to the UV tab here under the tool menu, and I'm going to turn the bump value all the way down and press Morph UVs. And you can see it's kind of previewing your UV shells, but what's really cool about this is you can export an OBJ of this flattened uh, object. So I'm going to go back up and export my OBJ. Jump back into Maya again. I'm going to import armpit flat. Now one thing to take note of, um, you can move this if you want to. Just make sure that you don't freeze transformations because it needs to know how to get back to the original mesh. So it needs these transform values right here. So don't freeze transformations or it'll fall out of alignment. Um, the other thing too is when you do that flatten technique in ZBrush, it kind of chops up your mesh into parts. So what we can do is just select all the verts and then go up to edit mesh merge to merge all your verts. And if we look at the UV map really quick, you can also see that it broke up all the different faces into separate UV shells. So we can go ahead and sew that back together too. I'm just gonna go stitch together. And there we go. And we can delete history. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually just make a flat sheet of chainmail, and then we can transform it to wrap around this 3D version of the object. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a torus, create a little donut for our first little chainmail link. And I'm gonna keep it low poly for now because we can always smooth it later. So let's just go eight by eight, super low poly like that. I'm also going to change the radius and the section radius. It's a little bit big, so think about the scale you want it to be. And I'm gonna kinda of sit it a little bit outside the mesh like that. Okay. So I'm gonna duplicate this, and move it over. And then both of these, I'm going to rotate about maybe 20 degrees on Y. And then I'm going to duplicate them again and move them down. And I'm going to rotate these, these ones uh, minus 20 degrees. And then we can also shift them over this way so that they go through the chain mail like that. So we have kind of this diagonal direction going down. And that's all you need to make chain mail. You can actually... Um, freeze transformations, and then duplicate this. So I'm gonna hit Control D, move it over as far as I want to make a repeating pattern, and you hit Shift D to repeat that as many times as you want. 
Okay, let's grab this and I'll duplicate and go downward. And once you know how to do this, it's really easy. So you can actually go and look online and find different patterns of chainmail because there's different weaves and, and ways of putting it all together. And you can try out different patterns if you want. You can see it's starting to bog down like crazy. So we're going to get rid of rings here quickly. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and just select all the ones that are kind of outside the border of my pattern. And we're going to delete. And let's clean this up. We missed a few. Okay. So we've got a pretty cool chain mail pattern going on. One other benefit to doing it here in Maya uh, instead of in ZBrush is we can actually randomize the rotation of this chain mail to make it look more messy if we want to. So what I'm going to do is select all of the chain mail, but not the pattern behind it. And I'm going to use a bonus tool. Now in the future, I planned on making a video where I show off every single bonus tool. But if I go to bonus tools, modify, there's a really cool tool here called randomize transforms basic. And what we can do is just randomize the rotation of each piece individually, um, however much we want. In this case, I have it set to rotate randomly in all three directions, plus seven degrees or minus seven degrees. So I'm gonna click on random rotate. And I can see it's a little bit more messy. If we wanna go even farther, we can just do it again. And the more you click this, the more messy it's gonna get, but eventually, they're gonna kinda of go out of their pattern and it's not gonna look right anymore, so don't go too crazy with it. Now it's really bogging down with all this geometry, so I'm just gonna combine it into one object. That'll help it run a little bit better, but not the pattern, just the chain mill. So I'll do mesh combine, and make sure you definitely delete history on this. There we go. And also make sure you save because it can definitely crash with the next step that we're about to do. Okay. So here's the really cool trick that we're going to do. Because these two objects here have the exact same UVs, we can actually tell this one to take the shape of the 3D one or vice versa because of their common attribute. But really quick before we do that, we want to use a wrap deformer so that when we transfer the attributes from the 3D shape onto the flat shape and it changes the shape of that flat one, we want the chain mill to go along for the ride and kind of stick to the surface. So I'm going to go select the chain mill and then shift select the pattern and go deform wrap and cross your fingers because this is where it usually crashes uh, looks like we're good okay so next step is to click on the 3d version of the sleeve and then shift select the flat pattern and I'm gonna go to mesh transfer attributes option box and we want to transfer the vertex positions based on the fact that they share UVs. So the sample space here, I'm going to switch to UVs. Everything else can be turned off. And I'm going to hit transfer. And you can see it jumps down. Now you can see it's not sitting on top of the object. So what I can do is click on the pattern and just set my transform back to zero. And the chain mail goes back to zero. Now you want to go and delete history on everything. And you can actually delete everything except for the chain mail rings. At this point, they're ready to go. We can put them back into ZBrush now. I'm going to export my OBJ of my chainmail. Let's go back into ZBrush and load up our warrior character again. Here it is. And I'm going to go to Z Plugin, Subtool Master, Multi Append, and I'll grab that chainmail. And there it is. There's my chainmail. Uh, if I want to get it over on the other side, I can actually just duplicate that subtool and then go down to Deformation and click on Mirror. And I've got chainmail on both sides. And when I turn all of my tools back on, I've got chainmail in the armpit. Awesome. Now this can be used for anything that needs to conform to the surface. So don't just think of this as a chainmail generator. I use this all the time for sci-fi tubing and wires as well. So I've got this basic dude here and you can see I've unfolded his UVs. Not optimized for texturing, but for this technique. So I want this wire to go kind of up his side and then over his shoulder and then down his wrist. So I made sure that I had a UV shell that has no cuts along the path that I want this uh, pipe object to travel. So I'll just do what I just did with the chainmail. I'm going to click on my pipe, click on this pattern, go to deform, wrap, and then once that's done I'll click on the 3D body, 
shift select the flat body and go to mesh transfer attributes. Now what's really cool is before you delete history, you can actually click on your pattern and you can modify this. So let's say I don't want it to be form fitting right here across the middle of the chest. I can go and modify the underlying pattern and the tube will still follow it for now until I delete history. Or maybe down here at the bottom, I don't want it to be form fitting on his wrist anymore. And so I'll just kind of pull that away like that. Now it's kind of dangling. Once you have it how you like it, just delete history on everything and then delete that pattern. And now we've got this cool tube, this little sci-fi detail following my character's suit. So there's tons and tons of possibilities with this. Now I make a lot of chain mail, so if you know a better way to do this, be sure to leave a comment. <laughs> I'm always looking for ways to speed up my workflow, but that's the way I do it. All right, see ya.